Hello and thanks for joining me. Well this evening I'm right back where it all started. About 18 months ago the very first scene of my very first vlog was shot on this exact bench. Now I'm back at the church in the sea and this evening I'm looking to get just one image. Let me explain what I'm up to. When I started this channel I decided that I would go out and do location shoots and then follow those videos up with post-processing so that you could see the entire process from start to finish. Now, it wasn't long before I realized that nobody was watching the post-processing stuff, so I stopped bothering. I have done a few since discussing specific techniques, but I've been asked recently to cover in a little bit more detail how I go about processing. So I thought for one vlog only, I would come back to the Church in the Sea, look for one composition, show you everything about taking that composition, then we'll go back look at the exposures, decide which one to process, and I'll show you what I do with them. Now the church in the sea is actually quite a difficult location if you don't get here during the right conditions. And what we've got tonight is an absolutely idyllic spring evening. It's the middle of April, there isn't a breath of wind, and there's a really hazy sunshine. Not a lot of detail in the sky, but the sort of thing that gives you a bit of atmosphere. And right at the moment, the moon is almost approaching a full phase, and that means a really high spring tide. And this evening, sunset and the spring tide are almost at the same point. So I'm hoping we'll be able to get some separation on the church itself, a bit of interesting light reflected in the water perhaps. Don't know, I haven't worked out what my composition's gonna be yet. But whatever it is, I'll be talking you through everything to do with it and then we'll go back and have a look on the computer and I'll show you what I do with these things when I get them home. Well, well, I got myself all set up and as usual, I've already taken a few exposures because I could see the light was changing really fast. And from my experience of Anglesey sunsets, I can tell that this is not gonna be one of the classics. That bank of really hazy cloud that's right on the horizon is pretty much gonna snuff everything out quite quickly. So it was necessary to get a few exposures off in good time to at least have some interesting light. What I haven't done is walk round to the far side of the beach where you get the standard shots with the causeway leading up to the church. Um, and by that I mean this sort of thing that I took last year, again at a sunset high tide. Now at that time of year, the sun has swung right round in midsummer to go down behind the racetrack. What that means is there's absolutely no chance of getting uh, the real power of the sunset in your shot if you want the church as well, because the church is pretty much at right angles to it. So what I'm doing is I've just literally come right down onto the beach in front of where you park. And if you've been here, you'll, you'll know what I mean by that. So I've got the church at an oblique angle. I've set myself up, as you can see, quite some way from the water's edge. That was deliberate. What I wanted to be able to do was to focus on the water pretty much just off the uh, strand line where it meets the beach. But by being this far back, I haven't got anything particularly close to my lens and that makes focusing a little bit easier. I don't need to use uh, a particularly long exposure, so no 10 stop tonight. The water in front of the rocks in the foreground is pretty glassy, uh, and the water behind that, it's got a ripple on it, but 
that's not really going to cause me any issues in terms of my final picture. And the reason for that is that I'm at such an oblique low angle to it, it's, it's not going to be distracting. The other thing is that, of course, when you walk around the beach, the problem you have is you're just looking at the gable end of the church. So it really doesn't have quite the same impact. In order for me to be able to bring some detail out of the church, though, in this really diffuse, hazy light, is by cranking up my uh, exposure compensation by about two thirds of a stop. Let me just check on that. Yeah, two thirds of a stop. Um, and what that means is that where the sun is in the sky and reflected in the water, there's two points that are quite badly clipped. Now, I don't mind a little bit of clipping because this is showing me the JPEG interpretation. I will have more data to work with in the RAW file. But of course, uh, I don't want to don't want to go too far uh, into the clips whites. So what I've done, I've actually got two 0.9 grads on, a 0.9 being three stop. And I've got one at the top and one at the bottom with a strip across the middle um, that isn't affected by the filters. So in other words, I'm darkening the top and the bottom, but gathering as much light as I can on the church itself give me something to work with in post. So we'll see how that works out. I did get some lovely colour, some really nice oranges. Um, and at one point I had the sun kind of blanked out by a cloud right in front of it with all the colour around it like a halo. With a bit of luck, that exposure might have worked. Um, I'm shooting at f5.6, the sweet spot of the lens in terms of aperture. Uh, and as I mentioned, by being this far back, focusing about a third of the way in, there's no need for a focus stack. So it really makes the overall setup of this image pretty straightforward. Now, this is a really tough location to get a good composition. At low water, you can use the cracks in the rocks and the tide pools to create leading lines. At high water like this, on a night like this, it's about colour being reflected. I do have a sort of a little finger of rock in the foreground to add some sort of interest. So it's not just a great big slab of water. And then I've got the church kind of framed in between two uh, bits of that rock with a lower bit in the middle where the church is. So it doesn't form too much of a, an optical barrier. So I think that's as good as I was going to get with the sun where it is, with the conditions as they are. Um, I'm going to take a few more exposures, but I think that's pretty much it for the on location bit. What we'll do is get back to the computer and have a look at the exposures and pick one to work on. I figured that you wouldn't want to browse through 50 odd exposures. So I've narrowed it down to these six, just for us to have a quick look at, but I've already decided which one I'm gonna show you the processing on. And actually there's another one that I probably will process as well. So uh, I know it was only gonna be one shot, but what can you do? I started out with this in landscape. I mentioned earlier, there was this situation where the sun was haloed by this little streak of cloud. Um, I quite like this, but at the same time, I dislike it intensely. And the reason I dislike it is because um, I'm too tight on the church. I really haven't got room to maneuver as far as uh, composition is concerned. I've cut off too much of the reflection of the sun in the water at the bottom. Uh, and also it's a bit dark because I was really trying to preserve the detail in the sky. Next one along, this is more like the sort of thing that I was aiming for. And as you can see, that bit of cloud has moved away from the sun now, but we've got the extent of the reflections that I was hoping for. Uh, and you'll notice when you look at the histogram that it's not clipped. So I got away with it as I'd hoped. Another one here, this one's a little bit darker, almost the same, uh, but I'm probably gonna work with this one because I'll be darkening the image down overall. Uh, and so it doesn't matter that it's slightly lighter. This is having got rid of everything that I'm definitely not gonna process. I've nailed it down to a few exposures and now I'm pretty confident which ones I'm gonna work with. So that's my initial workflow process and I'm sure it's yours as well. No great um, surprises there. The very first thing that I do when I'm in develop mode is I run a preset. 
Let me just explain this preset to you. What I found was, over a period of time, processing hundreds of images, my sliders weren't too far away. Almost, you could, you know, within a, a, sh a small range, you could say that they'd always be in about the same position. And that's because I'm working with the characteristics of the camera, the lenses, the sensor. Uh, and yes, obviously, I'll change things when the light is radically different. But if you think about a standard daylight shot or a standard uh, cloudy shot, usually your, sensor, uh, your sliders in Lightroom aren't going to be too far apart each time you do a process. You kind of find that you're doing the same thing over and over again. So what I did was I created a preset with those settings. What that means is that then all I have to do are just vary the ones that need varying. It makes life really easy in post. So the first thing I do, having saved a preset, is I apply it. And as you can see, it's already darkened it down a bit um, and introduced a little bit of contrast, uh, dropped the highlights, brought the shadows up. You'll notice that none of my sliders are particularly off center. And that's because I am pretty careful with my processing. Now that is personal taste. It's nothing to do with what you should or shouldn't do. Because in my book, there isn't a should or a shouldn't. If you like what you've done with these sliders, that's all that matters. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a graduated filter uh, on the uh, top half of the image. Now I'm going to pull it a long way down. The line in the middle is the point at which the effect of the filter is 50%. And I'm going to want that down here, right on the line of the, um, the water line. And I'll explain why in a moment. I'm going to pull my exposure on the top end right down. Uh, by a stop. Now, if I had that 50% line higher up the image, what you get then is this noticeable pale area of sky. Um, and if I pull it up there like that, you see that's really pale. You do get gradients in the sky, but they're not that obvious. So by pulling it down here, I'm basically making sure that the, the graduated filter in the sky is even. But as you may have noticed, I've now darkened down the church and the headland. So I need to deal with that. And the way I deal with that is by using a luminance uh, range mask, pull out the effect from the shadows to about there. That's that I'm happy with. So next thing I'm going to do now is whiz over to uh, Photoshop. OK, so we've got it open in uh, Photoshop and there are two main processes that I do in Photoshop. So uh, the first thing is that I'm going to sharpen it. Now I use a technique called frequency separation for sharpening and I've got it on an action that I saved it on a long time ago because it saves me a lot of time. So I run the action. The other action uh, that I've set up is an action that applies some NIC effects or DXO as they are now filters. Um, uh, using Color Effects 4. Uh, they're not coloring at all. What they're doing is they're applying some dynamic contrast. Uh, I found that it gives me a really pleasing contrast um, with this particular camera setup. And most of the time, I don't go back and adjust it. Um, so it's just a, a, a sort of standard that I've set up and I like its effect. And it saves me a lot of time messing around. So as you can see, we've now applied the contrast and it's it's just right for this particular image. So I don't need to reduce the opacity at all. I'm quite happy with it. So happy with that. So we'll just save it, head back to Lightroom. The final touches. I'm going to put a radial filter over this central area again. Pull it down at an angle. I don't want to affect that area there. It's just this kind of bank of cloud on where the church itself is. Move the magenta over towards the green. That's better. That's much better. It was just looking a bit too, a bit too chocolatey. Um, yeah, that's not bad. So uh, while I've got this radial filter, I'm also going to add a little bit of exposure there to brighten that whole area up to pull your eye into the church. And I kind of like the misty effect. You know, there was that haze. It's a sunset image. The church doesn't have to be crystal clear. You know, I could crank up the dehaze and have it popping out. Well, that's just not the essence of this particular image. So uh, 
just a couple more things and we're done. Going back to my main basic panel, I'm just gonna pull the overall exposure down just a touch more. I really like how it makes the, the sun in the sky and the water richer by pulling it down like that. And finally, a new radial filter, which again is gonna be sort of oval shaped. Pull it across diagonally like that. Just gonna bring that up just a touch as well. And if we compare it with what we sent across to Photoshop, you can see it's quite flat. It's, uh, and this is the processed raw, it's still quite flat. We come back and I do an awful lot of dodging and burning, not so much on this one, but that's where I spend my time is by almost leading your eye around a picture. That's what I spend my time doing and that's why I like the colors and the, and the contrast and all the other stuff is pretty much automated. I'm really happy with that. That's the image. That's the one I'll be showing you at the end. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope you found it interesting. Um, next time I'm gonna be back in my natural environment, which is probably up a mountain somewhere. So I hope you can join me for that. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers.